That's a cool gardening project. And coming up now, we're going to be talking about strategies for pruning. With springtime coming up, lots of people are getting their pruners sharpened and are ready to go. And we're joined right now by Julie Clark from uh, Stronger Than Dirt, mm -hmm. uh, Landscape and Garden Maintenance. And yeah. it's a pleasure to have you back on the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And uh, you do garden maintenance, which means that you help people out with strategies for keeping their landscapes looking beautiful all year long. Absolutely. And pruning is a big part of that. And spring's a busy time. So we were going to talk about different kinds of plants. I'd like to start off by talking about the deciduous trees and shrubs. A lot of people over the years have gotten used to pruning during the winter time for these. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are some of your big tips for pruning trees and shrubs? This so uh, in general for, for the deciduous ones, we like to use the winter as an opportunity to shape the trees, uh, mm -hmm. to clear out any dead wood, um, and get a really good look at the at the bones of the trees and shrubs. Right. We can also take uh, some of the shrubs like a beauty berry and the winter is a great time to cut it down to the size that you are going to anticipate it being in the spring mm -hmm. and in the summer, you know. So uh, for, say, a beauty berry, if it's too big for its space, then this is a great time to cut it back to two or three feet tall. And that way you know that when it gets to be five feet tall, you've got what you need. Right, right. So thinking ahead, thinking about how big the plants are going mm -hmm. to be. I like what you said, though, too, about uh, doing this kind of pruning when you can see the bones mm -hmm. of the tree, yeah. the architecture of the tree. Yeah. And I, and I think that's a very good tip. Now, uh, on pruning trees, are there some special things that people should know? I, I remember growing up, I was always told to use pruning paint, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we use, we clean our tools with alcohol in between cuts, mm -hmm. uh, in particular between when you're moving from tree to tree or shrub to shrub. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, using pruning paint for any, uh, uh, cuts that are you know an inch in diameter or larger is mm -hmm. a good idea. Uh, we tend mostly with the ornamental trees and leave the big stuff to the arborists so very often we don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm a little uh, goofy or superstitious I suppose you could say and I will get a, a little handful of nice compost and rub it into the fresh cut in an effort to you know, darken the cut. For one thing, you won't see it, mm -hmm. but also to rub a little bit of uh, that nice live compost uh, mm -hmm. into it. So, and I've never, never had anything bad happen, so okay. I'm going to keep doing it. <laughs> okay, well, I've never heard that before. <laughs> so is it, is it disease prevented? That's what I kind of feel like. I think that the mm -hmm. microbial action in the compost uh, might just do a little bit to help that cut heal. Okay. That is not science. That is totally <laughs> voodoo, so. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, you know, gardener's experience matters. Yep. So, uh, and it seems to have worked for you. It so, has, it has. Okay. So, um, but again, we're talking about winter pruning for mm -hmm. the deciduous trees and right. shrubs. Um, and now let's talk about the evergreens. Um, uh, this, the evergreens uh, are, I tend to prune them a little bit later. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we leave those until late February, early March. It's always a bit dicey. We may get one of those late freezes, but nonetheless, you know, right before the growth is gonna start exploding is when I like to cut things like cenizos. Mm -hmm. And uh, then again, same approach, cut it back uh, with anticipation of how big it's going to be. Okay. And um, you know, a lot of those things, you can cut a cenizo back uh, mm -hmm. pretty hard, you know, into fairly large trunks, and it's going to re-sprout all along that wood, and you're going to get a nice, dense shrub. Mm -hmm. So if your shrubs have started getting leggy, um, that early March, late uh, February is a great right. time to get those under control. Now, for the longest time, there were people saying, oh, you should never prune the native plants yeah. like cenizo or yopon holly. Um, uh, but I, I think that you know gardens should be practical. If you right. if you have a plant that's getting too large. Shearing it back can actually improve the look of the plant, is not just keep control of the height. Yeah, and not to mention the 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 fact that when those plants are out in the wild, they're not getting supplemental irrigation, they're not getting compost or fertilizers, and so we're treating them differently than they would otherwise, uh, you know, be treated out in their natural habitat. So you've got to adjust accordingly, otherwise you're just going to have an insane right. amount of plant. <laughs> right. And there, are, and there are some natives, I think, that, uh, you know, we're, we're look beautiful either natural, yeah. like the open holly, unpruned, mm -hmm. or just thinned out slightly. Yeah. 
or you can also shear it and use it like a topiary. Yeah, they and respond it, it works, really well. It's beautiful well. that You're way. right. You're absolutely right. I mean, they respond really well to, to anything that you do to them. Mm -hmm. The Yopon hollies make a great screen or, you know, nice multi-tunked small tree. You know, they, they yeah. really, really... Uh, are very easy going in that respect. So lots of good advice there in terms of, uh, you know, when to prune. And, and again, I, you know, for our average Austin winter, mm -hmm. I tend to go f on the evergreens like the end of February, beginning of March. Yeah, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. Um, because I want to catch that first warmth, uh, you know, for the new growth. And I haven't killed very many plants. <laughs> <laughs> using that uh, timetable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we get those late freezes, they, the new growth may get zapped a little bit and that does stress the plant, but if you just give them maybe a little nice mix of organic liquid fertilizer, that, that should help, you know, yeah. get them back on track. All right. Well, let's talk about perennials mm -hmm. now. And this is a, a hot topic every winter for me. I, I get lots of questions about, is, should I, pr you know, my, pl my plants are frozen. Mm. Should I prune them back? Should I wait? What's the best advice? So in a lot of ways, this is an aesthetic decision. Mm -hmm. um, if, if you don't mind, you know, looking at the, the lantana sticks and, mm -hmm. and everything else over the winter, then you can leave them until late February and do all your pruning then. Mm -hmm. I personally tend to like, I like what the winter garden looks like. You yeah, know? me too. You see the structure, you get to see your hardscape and some mm -hmm. of the nice rock work that some folks have or some of the little bits of art that may, be, mm -hmm. ha, may have been covered by the plants exactly. in, the, right. in the summer and fall. Mm -hmm. and. It's a great opportunity, too, if you cut everything back now to, uh, again, see the bones of the garden. Mm -hmm. And you may not have realized that uh, your plumbago had, you know, spread in a way that maybe is too close to lantana or something. Mm -hmm. And this is a great opportunity to take a really good look at that, a clean look at it, mm -hmm. and remove some of the things that maybe you don't need. Right. So we tend to, as soon as... Uh, first freezes hit, you mm -hmm. know, as soon as things get really uh, hit by the freezes, we start cutting things back. And yeah. uh, the goal is to create a, what is a winter garden for mm -hmm. us, where you have the evergreens are left, and then you've got nice bundles of sticks, which give you a sense of the shape of the plants. Right. You know, if you're just cutting willy-nilly, it can look messy, but if you cut it, you know, in a neat fashion, then it, it just, it can have a pleasure all its own. And I, and I like to take advantage of pruning in the wintertime because it, cleaning up the garden in that way mm -hmm. then it makes it so much easier exactly. to put down compost oh, and mulch. Oh yeah, it's so efficient. That's exactly what mm -hmm. we do. We do the cutback and then we start on with the compost and the mulch, so I'm with you. Yeah. Now, there are some plants that you want to wait until after they've bloomed. Yeah. And there are actually a fair number of them yeah. that it's very smart for, the, for spring bloomers especially. Right. Wait until after these plants have bloomed to do your pruning. Exactly. Let's tell folks about some of those. So basically anything that blooms uh, as essentially a spring only bloomer, azaleas, spirea, uh, some of the roses like Lady Banks mm -hmm. or uh, Climbing American Beauty, I think, and Revdor, things mm -hmm. like that that uh, give us that beautiful show in the spring. Right. Um, if you cut them back now, you'll lose a lot of that bloom. Mm -hmm. So it's better to wait until after they bloom. Now, I will say, not being a purist, that if you are desperate and you're just, it's driving you crazy because the plant <laughs> Your lady is... lady banks is eating yeah, the house. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then go ahead and cut it back. You're going to lose some bloom this year, but mm -hmm. it's not going to hurt the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, you're just not going to get quite as many flowers, but if it's driving you nuts, then get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, and, and r real briefly, on roses, mm -hmm. the, you know, the, uh, the, the more common garden variety of mm -hmm. roses, a lot of the antiques and even hybrid teas and things mm -hmm. like that. Some some spring shape up is a good idea. Yeah, I, I like to use this time to uh, cut out dead wood. And even with the the antique roses are very tolerant of very little care. You know, mm -hmm. you can exactly. again they're very tolerant of you can shear some of them. You know, a Martha Gonzalez can take to shearing and mm -hmm. and any kind of pruning. But uh, I like to use this opportunity to clean them out, get a little air cut out some crossing canes, the same type of care you would do with hybrid teas. Mm -hmm. I do for the shrub roses at this time of year. The knockouts can really benefit from that because they get so dense. Right. Well, and they've become so popular and very common. Yeah. Well, yeah. lots of good tips mm -hmm. here. I really appreciate you coming on board to share your information. Julie, thank you so much for uh, being a part of the show. Thanks. And okay. good gardening. Happy gardening to you. <laughs> and coming up next, it's our friend Daphne. Mm -hmm.